Donnie was back again in 2.4. We're gonna go over everything you need to know about this character today. We're not just going over artifacts and weapon selection and teams and characters. There's also some tricks that you need to know. And as always, if you're really enjoying the content, make sure you leave that like, hit the sub button for more information coming out here on the channel. And most importantly, make sure you have a good day out there. Ghani is a character I've had a lot of playtime with. She wanes and waxes like the moon does in the meta here. We've been able to experience Ghani all the way from Constellation Zero all the way up to Constellation Six. We'll briefly go over that as well, but we're really gonna focus on C Zero gameplay and mechanics in this video here. Now, if you are brand new, you might need to know a little bit more about her than if you're like an older player, but basically she hits like a truck with her charge attack skill. One of the downsides is you're left very vulnerable during your charge attack animation, especially fighting multiple monsters, but you can sort of fix that with her team composition. Her E as well leaves a little bit of a taunt behind, it explodes if it is destroyed or its duration expires and does a decent amount of damage there. And her L1 Averse is one of the best ones in the game, has up to 100% uptime, you have enough energy recharge, hits like a truck over and over and over in a very wide radius and only costs 60 energy. In the L1 Averse, as long as someone's standing in it, you're gonna have 20% increased cryo damage, which also affects Ganyu, and you're gonna get 20% increased crit chance on the most important part of her skill, the bloom damage, that AOE from her charge attack level two. And this is one of the things I almost never see anyone talk about with Ganyu, but it's very important, makes her a little bit more fun to play and also a little bit better at the same time. Speaking of Ganyu's charge attack level two, you're normally gonna see this, right? Charge attack, shoot, charge attack, shoot, or maybe you go into the auto aim thing and you just charge attack and shoot. Now there's a couple of different things you need to know about this character and how to properly utilize her. You're gonna get the slowest charge time if you just stay in the auto aim mode. We all know that already, but there's a way to maximize how much damage you can do by utilizing this auto aim mode. So what you're gonna do here is you can see the difference between using your normal manual level charge attacks pretty fast. If you use the auto aim, you'll notice that it's slightly slower to charge that second time. What you can do is mix these and it's very easy to do. All you do is do a normal manual charge attack charge, fire, and then go into the auto one. And then after that, you just need to leave with a dash or a jump. So instead of doing something like this, where you manual, boom, come out, manual, boom, you can do this instead. Manual, aim, uh, jump out. And mastering this actually makes it a little bit more agile a little bit more survivable, so you can move around enemies in the battlefield, and also, yes, increases your damage potential, which is awesome. When it comes to weapons, Ganyu has two very powerful force throw options. The first one here is the Craftable Prototype Crescent, and this has a very decent base attack for a force throw bow, but has the very powerful ability on it as well. Charge attack hits on weak points increase your movement speed by 10%, increasing survivability, as well as increasing your attack by 36 up to 72% at max refinement rank. This is awesome because if someone has a aimed shot weak point, you wanna hit that anyway because it's a 100% crit chance against a weak point. So this benefits you for playing Ganyu most efficiently. Maybe if you're on mobile, you don't wanna do this, but 72% attack for 10 seconds is wild because you get this charge shot off, then you can pass your elemental skill, your elemental burst, and that's all gonna have that big attack percent and you just charge shot again to keep refreshing that attack, which is awesome. You also have access to the Hamayumi here, which increases both normal and charge attack damage as well. As long as you have 100% energy though, you're gonna double this effect. The, the downside here of the Hamayumi is it has the lowest base attack of all bows in the game. So if you want to go ahead and ask me which one of the two should I craft because they're both crafted, if you wanna go for the weak point, I would go for the prototype crescent. If you wanna go for the lower base attack, charge attack damage bonus, and you wanna set at 100% energy all the time, which you can do with Ganyu, but most of the time you're gonna make sure that elemental burst is always active, then this one can be very powerful as well. Ganyu also has two very powerful five-star options between the Skyward Harp and the Amos Bow. The Skyward Harp's gonna have crit rate on it as well as some crit damage from the refinement rank. The proc on it though isn't doing a whole ton because it's physical damage, whereas the Amos Bow is absolutely her best five-star weapon or weapon in the game period right now, attack percent, and then gives you charge attack damage bonus, which increases based on the distance your arrow is fired. In this distance, in time that it takes for the arrow to actually do damage, also applies to the explosion. So it'll count the distance between your initial shot to where it hits, and then also keep the time 
into the explosion. So it's very easy to maximize this and it's an insane weapon. And when it comes down to artifact selection, she has two real sets to run with, maybe three if you wanna count the brand new artifact set as well. The first one here, if you're going for a freeze style team, the Blizzard Strayer set is just insane. Increasing your cryo damage by 15, amazing. And then giving you up to 40% crit chance against targets who are frozen. If they just have the cryo effect on them, but they're not fully frozen, you still get 20% crit chance which is awesome. This set makes it very easy to hit up to 100% crit chance on your charge attack level two with Ganyu because you get the base 20% from your ascension, 40 here, that's already 60%. If you have a times two cryo resonance with two cryo characters in your team, you also get another 15. So that's 75% crit chance before you even factor in any gear. So if you look at these stats right here, that's 75% crit chance on top of this base 18. We're almost at 100% crit chance against a frozen target, which is phenomenal. And this set makes her very easy to build as well. You use a cryo damage gobble and attack percent sands, and then a crit chance or crit damage circlet here. Then you just aim for a bunch of crit damage and attack percent in the substats. I just saw you only have 18% on this gear, so a lot of it is in crit damage as well as attack percent with just a smidgen of energy recharge for our substats as well. Well, Freeze Ganyu is the favorite way for me to play. A lot of you guys might not have the proper team compositions to utilize a Freeze team with Ganyu quite yet. So you also have options like the good old Wanderer set or the brand new set that came out in 2.4, which is basically the cryo version of the Witches set, which increases your cryo damage and also increases your cryo related elemental reactions. The troop set here gives you 80 elemental mastery, which also increases your reaction damage and then gives you 35% charge attack damage as well. If you're going for a melt style Ganyu team, use either the Wanderer set. I haven't experienced all of C0 through C6 of Ganyu. Here's what I have real quickly to say about our constellations. Don't get baited into getting any specific constellation here because they all build on themselves. C1 allows you to get crowd resist down, which is very nice and is probably also one of the most standalone ones. If you're really into Ganyu, you could think about hooking this one up because it gives you energy and reduces their crowd resistance. However, afterwards, they really start building on themselves. Getting two charges of your E isn't the most game breaking thing. And Constellation 4 does make damage increase to enemies who are standing in that large radius of elemental burst for a decent period of time. However, Constellation 6, well, this one gives you a free instant charge shot every time you use your E, so you can fully utilize your C1, your C4, in your C6 to great effect by dumping a lot of charge attacks at the very end of your elemental burst because you have that giant damage bonus up from the C4, two uses of your good old E here, which both give you instant charge attacks and the C6, well, it's giving you those charge attacks for free. Now, when it comes to team compositions, Ganyu is a pretty picky character. If you're using her in a freeze team, there's a select few characters that you're going to want to have access to. If you need someone who applies hydro all of the time. So we're looking at someone like Mona or Kokomi. They apply Hydro in AOE very significantly with a very high uptime. You can also do a very cool thing with Mona's Elmo Burst where you apply it and then you freeze the target and the Omen debuff will last longer because it won't decrease on enemies who are frozen. So you can get a very, very large, like 12 second duration on Omen if you're very good with that team composition. You also wanna have either Venti or Kazaha here because they have the proper amount of swirls in crowd control to group enemies up and then freeze them consistently between Ganyu's Elmon Burst and then their Mona or Kakomi. It's a very high-end team because those are all five stars. That is why she's a picky character. You don't really wanna use someone like Barbara because you're standing right in the enemy's face and that's not gonna work out super well for our archer character. The fourth character though, a lot of time in a freeze team, I love to run Diona as my healer because it's gonna give you access to shields, which is something that you really wanna have access to with Ganyu so you don't get interrupted during that very lengthy charge tech charge up animation. You also think of someone like Zongli or any other character that provides a very significant shield so you feel safe to use her at C0 and you don't get frustrated and throw your controller or your phone against the wall when you see her doing this number from getting hit by 75 hilly trail arrows. The other team that you can run is the melt team. You use the likes of Bennett to apply pyro to characters, maybe get a Xingling in there as well, and just charge attack 
on people who are affected with pyro to melt that big AOE damage from her charge attack level two. Fairly easy to do, sometimes can be inconsistent based on what enemies you're fighting, but if someone's immune to freeze, you could fully fall back on that team. You're just gonna need a brand new artifact set to do so. I am gonna be running this character through the abyss in the next couple of days. If you guys wanna see that stuff, make sure you hit the sub button so you can see it. It's gonna show off her weaknesses as well as her strengths in the current meta. I've also covered that in a previous video. Check that one out. Have a good day and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>